Hey, my name's Rob Lewis, and I'm the creator of the Gun Hand Luke short film series. For two years now, HitFilm has allowed me to realise my vision to create a world that would have been impossible without a Hollywood budget. But one aspect that has proved problematic from the start was weapons. Many of my characters have guns and also sci-fi type weaponry that would need realistic props. Uh, a quick browse through any prop weapon website will confirm how expensive that would soon become. And also, there's also the issue of brandishing weapons in public. So after trying various different methods, I remember how George Lucas and John Dykstra back in the 70s developed the system whereby they would move a camera around a static object to give the impression of it moving. So I thought, surely we can do the same in hit film. So after a few quick tests, I was convinced that a Mocha camera solve would do the same. It's also worth noting that any tracking prop you use has two different planes, like a front, a side, and it's also handy that it be the same colour as the CG model you intend to replace it with. So this is the shot we're going to work on. I'm going to show you how I achieved it. Uh, there's Tom um, with his drain pipe. So as you can see, I've decorated the drain pipe with all manner of uh, high contrast tracking features uh, that we're going to send over to Mocha. Okay, so we've launched Mocha and we're going to track the front of the prop and position the pink grid uh, to the same angle as the prop. Uh, as you can see, that's tracked really nice. Next, we're going to track the side and also position the grid on the correct angle of the prop. Now, it's just a case of doing a camera solve. As you can see, I've got 98, which is pretty good. Okay, now we're going to load that composite shot into HitFilm and you'll see a blue plane, which you don't need, uh, the camera and the tracking markers. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to copy the tracking markers and the camera and put them into the composite shot with Tom. As you can see, the tracking markers are in place. And now I'm going to load in my weapon, which is this sci-fi type thing that I created in uh, Blender. The first thing I want to do when I load the model is just put the anchor point uh, to the same area where he'd be holding it with his hand. Next, I'm going to position it in the shot uh, and it helps to go to the top view as well. So you can actually see the tracking markers and just make sure that it's lined up properly. And as we play that through, you can see it's uh, looking pretty good. Uh, one problem we do have is that Tom's hand now is in the background so what we need to do is duplicate the original footage and place it on top and we have to go back to mocha for rotoscoping okay so back into mocha we go we are going to create a spline around tom's hand and track it forward um, the track may slip every now and again so you just need to keep adjusting it but mocha does take a lot of the pain out of rotoscoping and we're left with a half decent uh, track so export that as shape data and it will come into hit film uh, looking like this. Copy the blue plane and paste its attributes into the layer on top of Tom's hand. And as you can see, it's not looking too bad. There is a problem at the end where his thumb just cuts off. So I'm just going to go back into the, uh, the mask and just adjust it over the last few frames. And there you go. It's not looking too bad at all. Um, one thing we can do, just drop a shadow. Um, you can obviously play around with the angle, the opacity, etc. That can help. We go into the materials menu of the model and just turn on uh, cast reflections, receive reflections, etc. etc. And this is where we're going to make it look really good. Um, I'm going to use HDRI uh, or an environment map, some people call it. Um, I got this one from HDRI Haven. There's a link in the description. Okay, so import the HDRI environment map into here film and drag it to the bottom of the composite shot. We're not going to see it. Um, then once we go back into the material menu and click use layer and then choose the HDRI, you can see that the model takes on the overall color scheme of the HDRI. And then once we add lights, the model really looks the part. Uh, one benefit of using models is that you can adjust the lighting to make the shot work rather than what was real on the day. Uh, and then once you've added the bit of light flare and color grading, you're good to go. Well, thanks for watching. Any questions, please feel free to fire away in the comments.